Awesome. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks, Saya, for the introduction. Um, so I'm Tushar Krishna. I'm a faculty member uh, at Georgia Tech. Um, I work primarily in ML systems and specifically looking at simulation platforms uh, for designing future systems. Uh, my partner in crime, Srinivas, actually couldn't make it here today. His apologies. Uh, but I'm going to kind of be presenting uh, some joint work we've been doing over the past, uh, past few years. Um, so uh, essentially, I'm very excited to present Chakra and AstroSim, which uh, are components of an open source ecosystem we are trying to create for advancing the co-design uh, for future AI systems. And uh, you know, all of the speakers uh, in this session have actually done a great job motivating uh, you know, what I'm going to talk about. Um, so I'm going to recap some of the trends that we've already seen right, uh, in this session and in, in OCP in general. So the first trend, of course, uh, being large AI models. Uh, we've kind of you know, come to the conclusion that uh, adding more parameters and uh, are very, very beneficial for um, AI uh, workloads. And specifically for generative AI, this chart is trying to plot the, the size of the models uh, as a function of the year, specifically for transformer models, right? which are really the building blocks to a lot of the LLMs driving uh, you know, applications like ChatGPT. Another trend is around data sets. Right? So uh, our models are only as good as the data we train them on. And there's massive amounts of data you need to train these models. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, one of my students went and asked ChatGPT what its training data set size was, and it said 570 gigabytes. Uh, and the same question to Bard said uh, 1.56 trillion words. So of course, this naturally has implications across the system, right? And actually, Ritu had done an excellent job kind of you know, summarizing these, right? So on the compute side, you need zero a scale of floating point operations. And since Moore's law has stagnated, we can't simply rely on you know, processor scaling. On the memory side, you need tens of terabytes. Uh, and so just to fit the models, you actually need multiple uh, devices, multiple neural processing units or NPUs, which could be GPUs, TPUs, and so on. And this is just to fit the model. Once you start thinking about you know, sharding the data to train it and the optimizer state, you need even more memory. And of course, if you have any distributed system, it leads to communication. And you have tens of gigabytes of collective communication that needs to run across the system. So these implications have actually led to a third trend, which is this emergence of you know, specific uh, HPC systems that are optimized for AI. And again, I think Syamak did an excellent job right, trying to talk about this design space. Um, and, and essentially, there's several examples of this already today. right? So Google's TPU, NVIDIA's HGX systems, Intel's Habana systems, Meta's Zion, and even you know, uh, startups like Cerebrus with their Android beta systems are all examples of these HPC clusters uh, optimized for AI. So from a 100-foot you know, view, uh, a lot of these systems look something like this. right? You essentially have these customized NPUs at the endpoints to accelerate compute. And you want to scale uh, by having uh, you know, customized fabrics. And these fabrics include both the scale-up fabric, which is this tightly coupled fabric between the accelerators, you know, things like NVLink, uh, which are much higher bandwidth. And you have scale-out fabrics, which is the traditional data center scale-out fabric, which might include you know, Ethernet, InfiniBand, and so on. And while this is the 100 foot view, once you kind of go into the details, that's where you have uh, you know, huge differences in terms of the microarchitecture of the NPUs, the fabrics that are used, and so on. In fact, at OCP, we've seen several examples of different kinds of fabrics that are being used in the system. So in order to study such systems and in order to design the next generation of such systems, we've been focusing a lot on trying to understand and abstract the design space of these complex systems. right? And so here, what I'm showing is kind of an abstraction of this design space, the software and hardware design space. And I've kind of used five colors to, uh, to elaborate it. Uh, so the green part is what we call as the workload layer. Right? This is where the model comes in. You know, it's sharding strategy, whether it's you know, data parallel, uh, tensor parallel, pipeline parallel, some hybrid strategy, some of the communication policy. So this is, the, this is really trying to show the decisions that you often take at uh, the framework like you know, PyTorch or TensorFlow or JAX today. Then the pink part is what we call as the uh, system layer. This is where the specific communication algorithm and scheduling strategy comes in. So this is trying to capture decisions that might, might be taken by a collective library like Nickel or Rickel or 1CCL. Uh, the light blue and the dark blue parts are essentially the compute and memory subsystems. And the orange part is the network fabric, which again has its own software and hardware stack depending on the scale up and the scale out uh, mechanisms you're using. So how do you actually navigate this? Right? And remember, there's a big codependence between these, and that's what ends up giving you the end performance of your uh, model. 
So in order to navigate this, uh, so this is going to be primarily the, the focus of my talk. I'm going to talk about two pieces of this ecosystem that we've been developing. Uh, so the first is Chakra, which focuses on the workload layer. And the second is AstroSim, which is a distributed uh, multi-fidelity AI system simulator. So let me start with Chakra, right? So, so Chakra essentially uh, comes from this motivation that we would like to design next generation systems and benchmarking is a very, very important challenge, right? So if you think about how uh, you know, a co-design loop works today for these systems, uh, you might have you know, some system that's deployed, let's say a, a, a cloud TPU, and you're observing some workloads uh, running uh, there in production. Uh, you want to you know, reproduce the behavior of these workloads, maybe identify bottlenecks, so you start doing that. Maybe you identify some bottlenecks in the communication fabric or the compute. Uh, you try to design the next generation computer communication fabric, you know, design it, emulate it, simulate it. Uh, once you're happy with the design, you'll of course deploy it. So you'll again kind of implement it, test it, eventually deploy it, and uh, again now you start running with the next generation of workloads. Right? So this cycle kind of keeps continuing. So, uh, so one of the challenges here in trying to design next generation systems, especially from a benchmarking perspective, is A, that there's a huge cost for running full workload benchmarks, right? So uh, if you take an MLPerf workload today, uh, in order to run it uh, over a distributed system, A, you need to you know, be able to have like the, these clusters with thousands of GPUs, which is very, very expensive, and only a you know, few hyperscalers can really uh, do that. Uh, it also requires heavy cross-domain expertise across both the software and the hardware stack, right? So this really limits the, the, the co-design capabilities because of these things. It's also very difficult to isolate specific bottlenecks on the compute, memory, and network side with like full bench, uh, full workloads. It's hard to keep up with the pace of AI innovations, uh, and it's also often hard to obfuscate details, which is why several companies are hesitant in just sharing like full workload details uh, because it might leak proprietary details, right? And it's also often hard to reproduce uh, the results without you know, the full software infrastructure. So in order to address this, we've been trying to create an abstraction for you know, workloads running in a distributed sense. And the key part of this abstraction is this notion of chakra execution traces. So the execution trace is fundamentally just a, 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 a DAG, right? It is a DAG that is comprising of the compute, communication, and memory operations that need to be scheduled uh, when you're running this distributed workload. Uh, and each of the the and so it's a DAG, you know, with like the nodes having uh, information around uh, the compute memory communication behavior, the tensor sizes, how much runtime did it actually take to run that operator, and so on. And the edges are trying to capture the dependencies, both control and data. So I'm not going to be able to go into a full detail of the the, the schema itself, but I'm happy to talk uh, offline about how uh, what this specific uh, trace looks like. But what do we want to do with these traces, right? So now this is the, the entire ecosystem that we are trying to create from left to right. So on the left side, you can see that, let's say I'm running these you know, uh, production, I'm running uh, workloads on our production systems, and I'm going to start collecting uh, these uh, traces uh, with whatever you know, information we have. And then I come to the middle part where we are trying to create this uh, open ecosystem where we are developing tools uh, to analyze these traces and create mechanisms where you can take these traces and either feed them as replay benchmarks on current systems. So if you just want to understand performance bottlenecks on current systems, you can take these traces and feed them again and maybe just replay the compute or the communication part of it. Or you can take these exact same traces and feed them through a simulator. And we already have an open source simulator, AstroSim, that I'll talk about where these traces work. Or you can feed them to your own internal simulator. So the idea is as long as we can agree on the common format for these traces and the schema, it enables interoperability and allows us to kind of plug and play and use this both with uh, open tools as well as, as well as proprietary tools. And uh, so Chakra, is, uh, I'm very excited to announce, is part of ML Commons now. We actually started a working group just a few months ago. And several you know, people in the working group are already in the audience. Uh, so the idea is to, again, create consensus around the execution trace methodology, uh, create uh, sh a shared ecosystem uh, with you know, uh, and shared engineering effort to enable this plug and play op interoperability. And eventually, we want to get to a point where we can create a benchmark suite of these traces. So in addition to you know, just the full system workloads, if we we can have a benchmark suite of these traces, it allows different people in the ecosystem and different vendors and hyperscalers to optimize for different parts. So that's the, the chakra part, right? So now we kind of move down the stack to, uh, like now that I have the workload, how do I try to model and simulate a future system? 
So this is where we've been developing the simulation infrastructure for our, called AstroSim for the past few years. Um, and the basic idea in AstroSim is, again, it tries to capture these five you know, components of the stack that I mentioned, right? The green, uh, uh, pink, light, uh, blue, green, uh, and orange parts, right? Uh, but the main, uh, the main novelty in AstroSim is the idea that instead of just designing one monolithic simulator, it is basically an infrastructure where you can come and plug in your own simulator. And so what we do is we provide a reference implementation, but you can come and swap out certain parts with your own simulator. And again, we enable this via a set of common APIs that we've built that enable this interoperability. So I'll briefly walk through the, the various parts of the simulator. Again, I won't have time to go into full detail, but happy to chat about that offline. So on the very top, uh, you know, you have your chakra traces that are coming in as input. Uh, the workload layer in AstroSim is basically trying to parse those, uh, you know, the, the execution trace graph, identify the operators, and send them down to the system layer. So the system layer is the one that is going to initiate the compute communication and memory operations. Uh, it has collective algorithms that are already implemented. Uh, and it basically identifies the operators, breaks them down into individual events, and then passes these events down to compute memory and network simulators. And these compute memory network simulators are where you can kind of plug in your own simulator or model depending on the fidelity you want. So for example, for the network side, you can plug in different simulators. You know, if you want to study things like communication protocols, uh, like transport protocols, if you want to study topology. For we already have examples where if you're trying to study very large scale systems, we provide an analytical simulator. But if you're really interested in studying you know, low level details about RDMA, you could plug in something like NS3, which works today, uh, and just kind of plug in and plug out. Um, on the com compute side, again, you can plug in your own compute simulator, depending on if you're interested in studying GPUs or TPUs or any custom model. Uh, or you might be like, I just want a roofline model because I really care about the other aspects, right, which is much faster. And similarly, on the memory side, you know, we talked a lot about these pool memories you could create with CXL. So you can plug in your detailed simulator that is trying to model these kinds of disaggregated memory architectures as well. So to conclude, uh, essentially, you know, there is this large co-design space for AI systems, which includes challenges across compute, network, memory. In fact, uh, previous talks also talked about storage challenges here, right? And so in order to navigate this, uh, we are in, we've introduced this uh, framework called Chakra, which is an open graph-based representation of distributed AI ML workload execution. The idea is it will enable isolation and optimization of compute memory and uh, communication behavior. And we're trying to create an ecosystem where we can you know, benchmark cur current systems and also create these benchmarks to allow us to design future systems. And AstroSim is a distributed uh, multi-fidelity simulator. Uh, it's effectively modeling va various aspects of distributed a AI training. And it allows you to mix and match different performance models uh, based on you know, the fidelity that you want for compute memory and communication. And finally, I want to uh, end by just thanking uh, like, uh, so even though I'm presenting here today, this work is really a collaboration with the fantastic team of uh, students, researchers, uh, and, and engineers across you know, industry and academia. Uh, so some of them are listed here. As I said, some of them are in the audience as well. Uh, so this is a really a collaborative effort with all of us. And with that, I'm going to end my talk, and I'll hand it back to Ritu uh, to conclude this part of the session. Thank you.